From the station that made country music famous, 650 AM WSM, this is a Coffee Country and Cody podcast. Hey, it's Charlie Matos, and in this episode, we sit down with Jewel. She zoomed in from her home in Colorado to chat about her brand new album, Freewheelin' Woman. We talk about a tour coming up. Her 10-year-old son will be playing some drums for her on the road this year. The early days of her career, the struggles to success, and a whole lot more. Enjoy our Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast with Jewel. Coffee, Country, and Cody. And Jewel has just zoomed in here this morning in all her beauty and glory. Welcome to the show in Nashville, Tennessee. Let's start with trivia. You are today's contestant. Jewel, are you ready? In 1970, in 1970, this artist became the first female country artist with a gold album. 1970. Name her. 70. First female with a gold Let's see. Loretta was really popping then. You might just want to stop right Mm -hmm. there as your lifeline. Yes. (laughs) Loretta Lynn (laughs) is the correct. Uh, (laughs) That's right. You're a winner. And uh, Don't Come Home a Drinking with Lovin' on Your Mind was on that first album. That (laughs) first female country artist with a gold album as certified by the RIAA. Well, it's great to have you in Nashville this morning. Thank you. Oh, my God. I'm a huge Loretta, Loretta fan. And you guys asked me the one right question. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Pete Fisher, former vice president, general manager at the Grand Ole Opry, was just here with his daughter-in-law, mm-hmm. Jessica. And, uh, you know, I remember many nights on the stage of the Grand Ole Opry when you came to visit us where I introduced you in hosting on a particular show night. And where are you this morning as you join us back home in Nashville, home of the Opry? I'm in the Rockies, actually, in the Colorado. So Alaska, people will know as home for you originally. That's where we first met you. Yes, yeah. I was uh, raised in Alaska on a homestead. Stead, my family are pioneers. There's actually a show about my family. A lot of people still don't know it's my family, but it's called Alaska, The Last Frontier. And it sort of shows you how I was raised. When I was a kid coming up in the press, they they were like, is it a commune? I'm like, no, it was a homestead. They're like, is that a ranch? I'm like, no, it's a homestead. <laughs> Nobody could understand it. So it's been fun to have the show become so popular. But you've lived on ranches in Texas and Arizona. And so what took you to Colorado, I think, is where you're coming to us from Zooming in this morning, right? Yeah, I have a home in Nashville, um, but I always had a second home in the Rockies. And I guess coming from Alaska, the mountains are hard to get out of my blood. Um, I just like big nature and the size of things. And being outside, you know, Alaska really shaped me and it shaped the type of writer I am. I was alone in big open spaces, you know, just my whole life. And that's honestly what I like. So that's kind of why I'm here a lot. Well, you are getting ready to go out on tour. I mean, we're talking here in mid-April, but by June, you are on the road in a big, big way with new music. Uh, June 8th, you'll be in Mansfield, Massachusetts at the Xfinity Center. On the 10th, you'll be in... uh, Wanta to York at the uh, Northwell Health at Jones Beach Theater. Saratoga Performing Arts Center, Saratoga Springs, New York. Also at uh, in New Jersey, got a couple of gigs in New Jersey in mid-June. How does it feel to have new music and to be doing what artists do when new music comes out? And let's take it to the people. I'm really excited. Um, it's been seven years since my last album. Uh, I self-produced my last album there in Nashville, I think at the RCA uh, Studios. And waited a while. It's it's interesting, you know, I, as a musician, not a lot of women talk what it's like to be a mom and a musician. Mm-hmm. We lose a lot of our female artists when they become moms because this job really is geared around touring, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and being away from home is sort of just the, the name of the game. And I'm a single mom. So learning how to do those things, like learning how to tour with a child, for instance, how do you keep your child's nap schedule going? Do you wake up with your child when you've only slept four hours because you just got off stage and couldn't wind down before 2 a.m. and your child wakes up at five or six? Is, does it make you a bad mom if you're not getting up with the baby? So that stuff was really hard. There were no nobody I had to turn to um, when it started for me. And then keeping your child in school. Um, So for me, like my number one goal was always how do I figure out how to be a happy person? My number two goal was how do you be a musician? 
And so, you know, that obviously means you have to take parenting really seriously and those types of things. So it's been a while since my last album, just so that I could obviously really make sure I'm upholding my commitment to my son. But it's been so nice to make music and be in a place now where I feel like he can he can tour. We can do this in the summer. Uh, and making music has just been obviously really fun. So what's it like, uh, as hard as it is to believe I'm saying this, what's it like with Case at age 10? <laughs> It's so fun. Being a mom has been the best, you know, thing. I've always hoped my life is my best work of art, you know, not, yeah. I don't want my art to be my best work of art. And so that means really trying to learn as much as I can about everything, right? Not just about how to be a great songwriter, but I want to be a great parent. I want to be a good person, all those types of things. Learning about parenthood for me has been one of the the most fun, most rewarding, super challenging uh, jobs as any parent can attest to. And he's cute. He's playing drums. He's going to play drum with me on tour. He'll play on your mint for me. Oh. So we've been practicing in my garage. Uh, he sings really beautifully. It's been a blast. <laughs> so what uh, has he introduced you to at age 10 that you never dreamed uh, <laughs> before parenthood that you would be involved in? <laughs> I can tell you every single thing about Ninjaga. It's, it's <laughs> don't know if that's helpful, but <laughs> oh, I, I have an eight-year-old Jewel at home, so I'm I'm with you on that one. Uh, with that and Roblox, <laughs> I've become an expert on whatever Roblox is. So, hey, so the new record comes out Friday, Freewheeling Woman, and the last time I can remember Freewheeling in the title of an album worked pretty well for a guy named Bob Dylan. Uh, was that conscious at all with the title? No, it was a lyric out of the a song of mine, um, and I just liked it. For me, the title is really just about kind of what I was talking about with being a woman. I'm really proud to be where I'm at. I'm 47. I'm a single mom, and I feel like I'm writing better than I've ever written. I feel like I'm singing better than I've ever written, and I have fought my entire life to be able to live my life on my terms, and it's been hard. It hasn't been an easy life, and so I'm I'm really proud of where I'm at, that I have the autonomy that I've made my own way, earned my own money on my own songs and my lyrics on my thoughts um, against a lot of odds. So for me, the title is just sort of about the empowerment that comes with that. Uh, definitely am aware of it as a Dylan title too. Um, <laughs> he really mentored me when I was young and he's kind of the reason I didn't give up on my first album. My first album was failing and I went in to record a second album and then he asked me to tour with him. So I went on the road, quit the second album and he was just like, he liked it. He liked my first album. And he was like, I was like, if Bob Dylan likes me, but nobody else does, I'm going to be okay. Like, <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Tell me about the author And he part. just really told me not to give up, you know, so he's why I stuck with that first album. Uh, the author part of your life that people may or may not, you know, fans who follow you closely will certainly know, uh, but never broken. Tell us about this work. And w what I love is one of the notes I saw said, Make happiness a habit. And you talk often and support causes often related to mental health. Yeah, you know, I moved out at 15. Um, my dad was an alcoholic. He had a lot of PTSD, but nobody knew what that was back then. Um, he was abusive. And so I moved out at a really young age. I started paying rent and hitchhiking to work because I couldn't drive, much less have a car. And did your mom I leave at like when you were eight or something, Jewel? Yeah. Yeah. My mom left at eight. My dad took over raising us, which I'm, you know, so thankful for, but it, it obviously was really triggering for him. I knew statistically kids like me end up repeating the cycles. So I knew statistically I should end up in some kind of cycle of addiction or in some kind of abusive relationship. And it was, you know, obviously at 15, you don't want to feel like you're already done. It's predestined mm -hmm. what your future is going to be. And so I really set off on this ambitious mission to see if happiness was a learnable skill. Was it a teachable skill if it wasn't taught in your home? And that's what my life has been about. Music was the soundtrack of that to me, right? So Who Will Save Your Soul, my first single is really about like, if I'm not willing to save myself, nobody else will. Am I accountable? Am I willing to do it? What does it take? What am I up against? Um, Hands was about when I was homeless and shoplifting and finally looking in the mirror and saying, all right, nobody's coming for me. I'm coming for me. Um, I'm not a victim. What I do with these hands is up to me. So that's, it's been the, the driving force of my life. Um, the word mental health wasn't a word. Mindfulness wasn't a word, but what I started stumbling on when I was homeless was basically how to rewire myself through behavioral changes, um, basically how to change habits to create different outcomes, right? Different actions lead to different results. How do you change your actions? Um, 
And so I started a youth foundation about 19 or 20 years ago, where we help kids that are similar to me, no therapist, no support network, no safety network, at-risk youth that have suicidal ideation, um, mental health issues. And we have one of the best rates in the world, actually, of helping kids heal with um, anxiety disorders and suicidal ideation. So it's been really rewarding. And that's actually what I've been building for the last seven years, um, our multiple platforms around those tools. I'm curious, how long were you homeless? And then what, what was the break where you were no longer homeless Homeless after a period? I was homeless when I was 18. Um, it happened because a boss propositioned me. And when I wouldn't have sex with him, he wouldn't give me my paycheck. My rent was due, got kicked out of where I was living, started living in a car. My car got stolen. And it was just a, a wildly vicious cycle. I think it's hard for people to comprehend how hard it is to get out of that pocket. Um, mm. Everything just starts going wrong. Uh, you start looking homeless. You don't have a street address to get a job. Even if you get a job at a convenience store, you'd have to work for six months to get first and last month's rent and enough to pay utilities. It's just, it was wildly difficult to get out. Um, I started writing songs and singing because that's what I was raised doing. And I thought I could get a gig and make a couple hundred bucks maybe was like my goal. It was not to get famous, actually. It was just how do I get off the street? I couldn't hold a job because I had bad kidneys. Also, nobody was giving me a job. And I got discovered while I was homeless. And probably about a year, it lasted a year. Jewel, this morning, thank you so much for being so open, so honest, and sharing your story with people all over the world. WSM Radio, home of the Grand Ole Opry, where you have played frequently through the years. And, of course, Circle Television now all over the world at com. We'll see you uh, June 21st, Ascend Amphitheater in downtown Nashville with uh, Train, Blues Traveler, Will Anderson all on that tour as well. So it's going to be fun to take the music to the people, huh? Yeah, I'm so excited and so excited to tour with my son. Uh, Free Wheelin' Woman is the brand new album. And uh, speaking of Train, Charlie, you referenced them on that tour. Set up Dancing Slow, and that's where we'll close this morning. People will hear it all over the world. Sure. Yeah, I wrote this song. Um, you know, for this album, I wrote 200 songs to get the 12 that made it. It was uh, an extremely intense process. I've always been prolific, which is I've never had to write an album because um, I've had thousands of songs in my back catalog. And so with this album, I still had thousands of songs in my back catalog, but I wanted it to be written from scratch from exactly who I am now. So I've never had to do it. My entire career was write an album from scratch. And so to get the 12 I liked, it was really hard. I see why middle-aged artists do drugs to get like a new sound. I see why Bowie and all the greats did it because doing it sober and finding something authentic that really moves you but still feels like I'm pushing myself, you know, in a in a new way was, was really difficult. And Dancing Slow was one of the 12 that made it. <laughs> you heard it here. Songwriter odds, baby. <laughs> 6.50 a.m. WSM Circle Television Jewel on Coffee, Country, and Cody. Thank you again. Thanks, guys. Another grand black top one roll. The more I see, the less I know. Everything seems to be tearing me apart. One minute I'm not better. Thanks for listening to our Coffee Country and Cody podcast. Our program director at WSM Radio is J. Patrick Tittle. Our digital producer is Haley Hall. Marketing and promotions director is Amanda Cannon. And I'm Charlie Mattos. If you like what you've heard, make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. And leave us a review on iTunes. It really does help new people find the show.